Here's the post parade, and the first horse coming onto the track is the number one horse, Riyadh. He had the advantage of post position draws. You know the winner of the eliminations. Each winner draws for one and two, and Riyadh drew the number one hole. He won the first elimination. A Jake Lobel Colt from Malaysia, but by and large, owned by Peter Heffering of Port Perry, who won the jug two years ago with Precious Bunny. He's won 14 of 23 this year, and over a million dollars on the year. The point of intrigue is that he wasn't right up on the gate, even though he had the rail in his elimination. And uh, we'll see what sort of tactic that uh, Jim Morrill Jr. has to use with him here. Uh, he is on the verge of a triple crown and, of course, a little brown jug. Uh, but you've got to know that Life Sign is going to want to try to, to take it away from him to get Gene Regal his first one. Okay, hey, the number two horse is Life Sign and will be driven by John Campbell and Abercrombie from Three Diamonds by Albatross, bred and owned by George Siegel's Brittany Farms of Versailles, Kentucky. Gene Regal trains. This horse has won nine of 17 on the year. He's uh, got a million for a lifetime. And you know, two years ago, uh, George Siegel was hoping to win the jug with Arts Place. He wasn't well enough to even enter the race. Last year, he thought he could win it with Western Hanover and got photoed. Maybe this is his day, Frank. Maybe this is the day. And you know, John Campbell was so very pumped after the finish of that uh, elimination with uh, Life Signs. So we'll have to see uh, if he is the winner of this year's Little Brown Jug. Number three, Presidential Ball, the winner of the North America Cup and the Meadowlands Pace this year. Horse hasn't been as sharp since mid-July, uh, but uh, Bill Robinson seemed to feel he was at his, the top of his game. And I talked to his groom this morning. He said he was at the top of his game, but he had a very rough trip in that first division. Parked to the half, almost in 53 and a piece. Cam Fella from the Mountain Skipper Mare, Skipper Mare I, Maryland, who was a top race mare. Antonio Chiavelli of Hamilton owns him. Jack Moyes, Zayev drives him. He's won 12 of 18 on the year. A pleasant surprise in his elimination was Ready to Rumble, who admittedly got the trip, but he did come to the outside against Riyadh in the stretch in the elimination. Owned by Mrs. Audrey Campbell's Lothlorien Equestrian Center of Mississauga, a log colt from a Nero Dam. They bought this horse just before the North America Cup. He's won five of 17 on the year, 202,000 lifetime. From post five uh, will be native born, and uh, there has been a driver change on this one to Bill O'Donnell. Bill O'Donnell is going to get the drive. Uh, there was a necessity of uh, some rejigging of the driver alignments for the Little Brown Jug final this year, and Bill O'Donnell has picked up the steer on the bill keeping trained native born. Native born is Annihilator Colt from Native Rita by Meadow Skipper. He's won five of 17 on the year. $305,000 lifetime. His lifetime mark is 151 and two fifths taken this year on a mile track. Bill Keeping, co owner and trainer of Native Born. Six is Captain Fantastic, and uh, as we mentioned, the necessity of the driver change is because Walter Case Jr. was down on a couple of them, and uh, he's elected to stay with Captain Fantastic for this final, and he'll start from post six. Captain Fantastic, a slapstick gelding from a silent majority dam owned by the Peter Pan Stables. Bill Keeping also trains number six, Captain Fantastic. He's a winner of five of 20 on the year. His most recent and biggest win of the year was the Dancer Memorial at Freehold a couple weeks ago. Now going way outside on the uh, wings of the starting gate, which is a decidedly a disadvantage here at Delaware Earl. Getting personal from post seven, John Stark Jr. is the driver. Mark Capone is the trainer. A gelding by storm damage from Fondle by Nero. He's won 10 of 18 on the year. And his biggest win came just last Saturday in the $200,000 final of the New York Sire Stakes at Yonkers. A very colorfully decorated horse with a white hood, white leg wraps, white harness, white breastplate. He's got the color in the field. I hope he has enough speed from that outside post. He's in a little rough today, I think. That uh, particular headgear is for what demonstrable value? I'm not sure. It, uh, it's a hood. It, he has uh, eye cups like a running horse, so it may be something to do with keeping him quiet or keeping him fired up. I'm not sure. And completing the field from post eight will be incorrigible big. Kelly O'Donnell is the trainer, and he's going to go back up uh, for the drive here uh, because of, of course, Jack Moiseyev going to presidential ball, who he drove in the eliminations and whom he's driven all year. So Kelly O'Donnell, the trainer, will also drive in Corrieable Big. By Hanover Shoe Farms, Big Towner from a Tyler B. Dam, owned by Kenneth A. Summer of Elyria, Ohio. He's won nine of 18 on the year and uh, around $70,000 lifetime. 152 and two win record at the Meadows, his best individual time. 
have Riyadh's nose on the gate. Let's check it now. Roger Houston has already said, are you ready? And the crowd responds, yes, we are. We're getting ready for the second heat of Little Brown Jug. And track announcer, you heard him, Roger Houston, take it away. Facing life sign, steps out of the gate on the outside, but Riyadh is speedy from the inside. President Jobal racing third, ready to rumble is fourth, racing fifth to the backside, native born, racing sixth, the end of the turn, Captain Fantastic, Riyadh has won the early battle, he leads by a length and a quarter, presidential ball second, opening pass. 27 seconds. The end of the turn. Riyadh leads. Presidential ball second. Racing third. Ready to rumble. Backing off now. Fourth to the rail. Life side. Pacing fifth as they race around the turn. Captain Fantastic. As they race in their line. Another is Riyadh. Life signs. First turn on the outside. From fourth. He's now third and moving up. As Riyadh takes him to the half. 56 seconds. Second quarter in 29, presidential balls in the two-hole trip. Racing next is ready to rumble. On the middle of the outside, Captain Fantastic is fifth. Racing six, getting personal seventh at the rail. Native born, moving to the outside. Down the backside and corner the big to the three quarters. Riyadh leads on by a lake. Lights on on the outside. Presidential balls locked in. Three quarters, one. 23 and 4, 27 and 4, and Riyadh has the lead. Life sign second, presidential balls buried at the rail. Ready to rumble is fourth, eighth or mile to go. Riyadh with the lead. Life sign, presidential ball. Life signs come on. Riyadh, life sign on the outside. Life sign wins the little brown jump. And Riyadh is denied. The Triple Crown as John Campbell waves the whip in the air for victory in 152. World's record. Second heat. World record for two heats by Life Side. Frank, it was like fate that uh, George Siegel and Gene Regal would eventually win the Little Brown Jug if they kept at it uh, long enough. As I mentioned, Art's place wasn't fit to start in the race. Western Hanover got photoed after three very tough heats. And Life Sign went an unbelievable trip today uh, in the final. Parked to the quarter, backed up in the hole, came first over. And at the three quarters, I didn't know if he could keep coming, but he did. Riyadh got tired and bore out. Presidential ball had a bit of room, but it wasn't enough. Life Sign was the best. The crowd here is absolutely buzzing for that electrifying stretch drive because at the 16th point when they came to the tote board it looked like it was Riyadh's for the little brown jug and the triple crown and life sign kept getting to him presidential ball just didn't get quite enough room up the rail and John Campbell uh, raising the whip after the wire to salute the crowd boy is John excited I mean for uh, being harness racing's winningest driver with over a hundred and ten million dollars in purses for his illustrious career this one is going to be one of the most special, if not the most special victories of his life. Well, that's for sure, but uh, Life Sign deserves a lot of credit. I know John Campbell's a great driver, but I have never seen any horse race any tougher than this horse did in two heats today. He was unbelievable. Three major moves in that first trip and this trip here. I mean, how many horses can can finish after coming first over for the last five eights on the outside and a half mile track in world record time? Well, there's the uh, winner's enclosure shot here at the Delaware County Fairgrounds. John Campbell has been uh, more ecstatic after this victory than I've ever seen him in his life. And and you know, Earl, there were a few things against the race today. The uh, drizzly day that it was, the gray skies, only two eliminations with seven horses in each. But again, Delaware has never, ever let us down. It's uh, been a day full of drama and emotion and, of course, terrific harness racing. One of the great shows ever in the business or any sports spectacle is Little Brown Jug. There we see the governor of Ohio presenting George Siegel with the Jug Trophy. All right, let's go to the winner's enclosure now with Roger Houston and pick up the post-race. This year, you deny somebody else the Triple Crown. That's, That's just how tough. That's how 
how tough these three-year-old pacing events are. Well, Riyadh and Presidential Ball are great horses, but Peter Heffering's got a jug, and I didn't have one. You got one now! Thank you, Governor. We appreciate you for coming here today. You know, we have the greatest governor that Ohio ever had. He's the honoree at the Little Brown Jug this year, Jim Rhodes. We ought to give Jim a hand for what he's done for racing over the years and the fact you haven't forgot him. Jim, we've got the groom's watch for you to present. We're going to do the ring next, okay? Let's go to the ring to the driver, and I guess, where's John Campbell? He's at the back. John Campbell. Jostens and Bill McKenzie are proud to provide the official championship ring for the Little Brown Jug. Jostens, the world's leader in recognizing outstanding achievements in sports, academics, and industry. And we've got a presentation for you. Congratulations, John, on behalf of the Central Dodge Ohio dealers. Thank you so much. John Campbell, you seem like you were a bit thrilled to win the Jug today. If you don't get thrilled about this, you don't get thrilled, and thrilled about harness racing. This is as good as it gets. The ring is already on. Yeah, I think I'll wear it tonight. Folks, I'm telling you, here's a guy that's won more races than anybody else in the sport, and he is shaking like a leaf. I mean, you, you're really emotional in this. Well, it's, it's a great feeling. You know, it's just an awesome performance. It wasn't a great drive, it was a great horse. He, 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 he just overcame a tough trip, and it's, you know, it's phenomenal. He, he's the star of the show. Hung almost, was it every step of the mile? No, we got in for about 10 steps and... and <laughs> oh, that's right. You went for the lead, got hung out there, backed off to fourth and came right back out. Yeah, I, I thought I had no chance or choice but to try for the lead and it just didn't work out. And uh, He just overcame a tough trip. It's a phenomenal performance. John, congratulations. Now we'll go to the caretaker. Scott, where you at, Scott? Where we got Scott? Up here? And for the presentation of the Groom's Watch, the former governor, the number one fan of sport of harness racing here in Ohio, James A. Rhodes, the presentation of the watch to Scott Nesdiel, the caretaker of Life Sign. Thank you. I want to congratulate everybody here. This is the greatest race in America. I'll give you a prediction. You're going to have 100,000 people here in the next few years. We're going to get the money while Governor Vonovich is here. We're going to get the money from the state of Ohio out of the racing fund. And we're going to do a first-class job for the people of Ohio right here in Delaware, Ohio. Thank you. Governor James Rhodes, here is the young man. John, John Campbell, unbelievable drive, unbelievable drive. Well, I, the drive wasn't as good as the horse. The, he just overcame a tremendously tough trip. It, it didn't work out just the way I wanted, but he, he was just so game, he wouldn't, wouldn't give up. You know, Jim Morrow was, trying, was worried more, I think, about presidential ball sitting in the, uh, right behind him. I don't think he was worried too much about you. Well, I, I don't know. There wasn't anything else he could have done differently. He, he had the control of the race, and uh, I certainly would have been liked to have been in his position. It looked like he had a chokehold on the horse. I mean, just holding him down, ready to let him go and spring ahead and beat everybody. But you had more horse than he did coming through the lane. Well, my horse just never give up. He, he's raced that way before, and uh, the final of the Rooney, he was first over a long way. He's uh, just so tremendously game. It's uh, just even amazing to me that he went that far. A lot of drama, a lot of emotion. Congratulations on winning the Little Brown Jug, John. Thanks a lot, Marty. <laughs> Big smile on his face. That's going to do it for us. We hope you enjoyed this year's edition of Little Brown Jug. Now some final words from uh, Earl and Frank. Frank? Yes, uh, John Campbell's first Little Brown Jug since merger in 1982, Earl. A, a great pleasure show as usual from Delaware, Ohio. So long for now. Life Sign wins the 48th edition of the Little Brown Jug.